All right, meeting is now live streamed. I think we're on. I need one, we one are more on. second. All right, fantastic. Hello, everyone. Good morning. We're here. I'm so, so excited. Um, super here. alive today, um, bringing you the wonderful Bina Bendale. And hold on, I'm frozen again. Give me a sec. All right, we're back. We're going to just freeze about. and unfreeze. We're going to play like freeze tag. <laughs> yeah, I know the tech gods are not on my side this morning. I don't know what's going on, but we're going to roll with it. It's all good. Um, yes. So I'm super, super excited to be going live today with Bina. Some of you may know who she is. Some of you may not. So I'm going to briefly introduce her. But for those who don't know me, my name is Rachel. I am a nurse coach. Um, I work with people to help them expand creativity and live a more vibrant life. Bina and I went through the same certification program. So we graduated from the Nurse Coach Collective together in January of last year. And what is so cool is our little group has really stuck together. We really, we still keep in touch. We still chat. We still know what's going on in each other's lives. Um, I actually haven't talked to you, Bina, in a little, in a little bit. So I, this live was really just an excuse for me to catch up and see what's <laughs> and going a, on. And a little corner. bit means like less than a month. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We, we know what's going on in each other's lives, but I'm like, what's going on with Bina? Let's do a live. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to ask you what's going on with you. So let's just start. Why don't you just tell people who you are and what you do? So I'm Bina Bendale and I actually have three parts to my business. So I help parents with special needs. I help them feel, release the guilt, release what they need and to really feel vulnerable and feel okay with whatever their passion is in life. Um, the second part is I am a transformational business coach. So I do a lot of wellness enhancements in large companies and help their employees feel valued. And then the second part is I also help other nurse coaches with the academy, uh, the Corporate Nurse Coach Academy to help other nurse coaches um, develop their dream and run with it, honestly. And that's yeah. me in a nutshell. Yeah, you do a lot. You do. I feel like you hit the ground running after we graduate, not even after we got before we even graduated. before we even graduated. Yeah. Remember our conversations? Yeah. Yes, yes. You you're a busy, busy lady. And one of one of the things I admire the most about you is the messy action piece. And that's something that I learned from you is like mm -hmm. when I was launching my program and I was shitting my pants and I was scared and I was nervous. And you were just like, just do it, Rachel. Just do it. You're one of the people that got me to go live on Facebook. You were like, just yeah. go live on Facebook. Just whip out your phone. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that day. And look yes. at where you are now. Yes. Now you yes. go live all the time. Yeah. So it's getting easier. It's getting easier. I can't say I still don't get nervous, but today I don't feel nervous. So that's a huge, um, huge transformation. Yeah. So tell me about, I'm so curious, like, where does that come from? Your ability to like take messy action? Honestly, I think it's, so to be honest with you, I think I've gotten a lot of no's in my life going from childhood up. So I think for me, like, especially after Rohan was born, I went through a huge, I went through a very, very bad postpartum depression first, and then having a child with medical needs, having a child with special needs, being at bedside, I think something kind of changed in me where I just finally got to a point where I'm just, I just don't give a fuck. Like, I just don't care because I've seen when you see your child possibly dying or in a situation or they're a coat, they come in with, you know, no airway or any of that. Or like when you have the stigma of social society saying, don't say anything, he'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Keep your problems in your house. I felt very isolated. And I think from that, from bedside, even like I started becoming, my voice became stronger and stronger and stronger. So five years ago, even now, what, seven years ago, Rohan was about three. I really was like, I want to build a platform to help other people, one, gain their own confidence, love them for who they are, but say fuck you to everybody else in a healthy way. Right. And as I kept going and growing as a, a com more confident bedside nurse and that that nature came out, I more and more realized that I was like, I was meant to do more. 
like people kept gravitating towards me. Um, even like at bedside, I met some really high end, well-known people and everyone's like, you should not be here. Like you are meant to do something else, but I couldn't figure it out. Why, how? Like, you know, everyone always says like, how do you do this? And I kept, that question came with me for five years and I could not figure it out until I found the Nurse Coach Collective. Once the Nurse Coach Collective came in and I tell everyone this, it was, I was on the phone with Nisha. And to this day, that was probably the most, like it just built my foundation solid because I was like, this is what I can do. This is an option I have. I can leave bedside and do really make what I want to have, like be, to be a reality. And I think that's what really solidified it. So I think it's just, I've always known for the past, like a lot of people now are still in that process of where I was five years ago or six years ago. So now I have the, I have the full solid foundation of like, I already know what I wanted to do. Now it's just going out there and creating it. But it didn't just come like the success that everyone thinks. It's like, oh, she went from June to March and got this deal. And yeah, from just March, figures. yeah, then <laughs> March to September, she's the six figures, you know? And it's like, it didn't, it wasn't like that. And I want people to realize that it took a lot of work. I yeah. just, I think that for me, I figured out the missing piece which was this coaching container. Yeah. Meeting the collective, meeting you, meeting yeah. everyone in our group that was like, saw me through. And you guys, there's a lot of personal stuff that came out with that. Saw me through that real hard time. And then I just said, you know what? I'm an atomic bomb. Just go. What am, what's, what's the worst going to happen? They say no. There, there's like, there's so much I want to say, but first of all, Nisha also did my application call. So we, she also did mine. And I remember that moment when I said to her, I've always dreamed of starting a podcast. And she was like, girl, you're in the right place. Like she was so nonchalant about it. And usually when I say that to people, it's like, oh, okay. But she was just like, no, no, like you have dreams go for them. And it was like exactly. such a revelation to me that you could want something so badly and feel like you're all alone and how is this right. ever going to click into place and how is this ever going to work and then it was for me coaching was the missing link it was exactly. like it blew everything open yeah yeah I also want to comment on your your journey with a child with special needs and how challenging that must have been and also just it's so amazing because people can go through experiences like that and it could crush them. It could destroy them. But for you, it was almost like your moment of just like rising. It was like, it shook you awake. And it was like, it made you not care. You're like this, this is what matters. Like I want to be here for this kid. And it must've been so challenging and so difficult. And it's just, it's just very, very inspiring to see how that was almost like your turning point. And it, it changed everything. So it's amazing. And it did. And you know, I always tell everyone, he's my reason. We don't know why he is the way he is right? Because it does, there's nothing like genetically, nothing's wrong. I got tested. My husband got tested. My mom, my sister, my brother. I mean, you name any, anyone in our, in our immediate family, everyone got tested. Nothing came up. So it's that one in a million of who he is to be where he is, right? But he also is here for a purpose, but he also created my purpose. And I think that's what the biggest difference is, is that when you go from being that rock bottom, possibly losing a child, possibly only, I even came up, my, I, I'm, I'm going to publicly say this even now, first time. I even thought about taking my own life several times, right? And it was rough, rough. And when you're hitting that rock bottom, and I tell everyone this because my husband's my rock. Like if I don't have my husband in my life, like I would not be here where I'm at today because of him, because he support and not even supportive. It's just, he helped me get back to that level of like, all right, let's just get up. Let's get out of bed. Let's do this. You know, reminded me of what life was on. Cause I don't think if I had him, I don't even think I'd be here right now, to wow. be honest. And I think that's like the biggest thing is like, when you hit that rock bottom, that's when you grow the most. I knew something had to change. I knew the codependencies with my family, with certain things had to change. And that 
oh, that 16 year old Bina. Oh, well, there's Bina acting like Bina. It's like, no, look at me for who I am today. Look at me for what I am now, not for who I was. We all made fucking mistakes. Dude, come on. We were 17, 16. We're 14. If I had to make it, who, what 14, 15 year old did not disappoint their parents? Please let me know who that kid is. I'll give you a big shout out. Yeah. You know, (laughs) I mean, I mean, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's where it's, but when people hold on to that, it really does affect you when you're older. Yeah. And that's one of the most powerful things about coaching is I think, taking those rock bottom experiences, taking those challenges and turning them into gold. That, that was your gateway to expansion. That was your gateway to a different kind of life was those rock bottom moments, those moments of not wanting to go on those moments of wanting to give up. And that's, what's so empowering about coaching is that we're able to reach out to people and tell them like, yes, I know it sucks. Yes. I know it hurts, but every single person on this planet has been there. And there is a way to walk through this. There's a way to live a better life. There's a way to instead of running away from your dreams or shoving them into a box, there is a way to accomplish them. There's a yeah. way to accomplish your dreams and your goals. It's, it's and a, it's, it's one step at a time. And I tell people, even in the academy, I tell everybody, this is not a sprint. Like this is a mar- marathon. The only difference between me and, and someone else is just, I just honestly don't care. I don't care about the outcome. I don't care about the money. I don't care about what is going to happen because I stay so present with what's going on today. Now, if that generates money at the end of the month, if I'm hitting 30, 40, 50 K months, that's great. But guess what? That goes right back to the business. I think it's not coming to me. Right, right. <laughs> like, you know, it's, so it's like, it's on a different level where people think that they're successful when they're making these high level money or high level months. But in reality, for me, again, I've said this before, if I made a difference to just one person by coaching, I am fully successful. Yeah. Yeah. It's about the impact. It's the impact. Yeah. When your passion is there, when your true impact is there, your income will come because people are going to gravitate towards you. It's that exchange. It's that energy exchange, right? I am going to give you me, not the fake Bina, me today, who I'm sitting from you, not the real one, the same one that's on social media, the same that's with her husband, the same that's with her kids, the same that's with her sister, brother, whatever it is. I'm not changing who I am just because I'm coaching you. And yeah. that's when people are be like, yeah, okay, you're real. You're not fake. All right. Then you ask them like, oh, can you give me a, they'll be like, yeah, I want to work with you. Yeah, I, th- I think that is your superpower is the not caring. And I'm so curious about this because this is something I delve into very deeply. So mm-hmm. a lot of my coaching revolves around self-expression and finding your voice. And this is something that I have struggled with probably my entire life. And it's something I still struggle with if I'm being transparent. It's, some, it's something that it's, it's an ongoing journey is learning how to express myself, learning how to not worry about what people are going to think, particularly family or community right. or my religious community comes up a lot for me. Yeah. So that's like a real area of growth for me. And something that I really love to walk people through is like, let's get you from this place of fear and staying small. Let's, let's expand, let's open up, let's be our true selves. Let's show people who we are. So I'm so curious, like for you and cause you, you exude this, like, Oh, I, I'm, this is who I am. Were you always like that? Or was there yeah. a time in your life where you were paralyzed with fear about what people think? I was bullied my, basically my entire life. I was bullied from third grade all the way up to like probably middle school. And then in high school, I have a, I mean, I still, and it's funny because I still, my core people from middle school, high school, we still connect to this day, but that confidence was not there when I was growing up. And I actually attempted suicide when I was 16 years old. I was hospitalized for about, I think I was hospitalized for like two weeks, two and a half weeks. And that whole revelation was where it kind of went in with, I wasn't dressed properly. I didn't have the nicest clothes or I had glasses or I didn't know how to interact with boys or whatever the situation was, right? I wasn't the cool kid doing whatever it was on that. And I always felt insecure because I always had 
really big curly hair or it was frizzy and it was this or I didn't develop my boobs weren't big enough compared to my friends or wasn't here I wasn't flexible or you know I just I was it, it really hit me to the core but I also do believe a lot of that does come from how it and I'm not saying my family I love my family to death but there was a lot of tension in the house where I was the middle child whereas when I was growing up my sister had cousins her age my brother had cousins his age they were girls they were boys I was kind of just left in the middle with really no cousin support I love them all to death now but it was just it was real hard because I wasn't old enough to be with the girls but I wasn't boy enough to be with the boys and I'd always remember hanging out with the adults for the longest time and then it really does affect your self-esteem. It really does affect who you are because then when you don't feel like that sense of belonging, that's going to come in, you know, to how you are at school, right? Because it's like, you don't have that sense of belonging. And that was a huge challenge for me for many, many, many years. And finally, after high school, when I, I joined a sorority, finally felt like I was, you know, part of something. And even doing that was a challenge. My mom's like, no, you can't do this. Blah, 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 blah. Like, it was like, it was always a struggle. I always had that struggle with like, don't do this. You don't know what you're doing. It's kind of like, no, 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 I do. When I moved out, I was, I went to USF for my master's working full-time at the veterans hospital. And I lived in Fremont, which is if anyone knows, it's it's like about 45 minutes, an hour into the city, 45 minutes to work. And when there's traffic, I'm in traffic for three hours a day, just going back from work to Fremont to this, to commuting to that. And when I decided to break free and say, you know what, I'm going to live on my own. I need to live on my own because one, I make enough money. Two, I'm doing my master's and there's just no 40 hours a week plus master's. It's a lot. And the commute had to go. And my mom didn't talk to me for like six months. My entire family didn't talk to me because I was going against the, the social norm of you're not married, so you can't leave the house. Wow. So it does kick you to the core. Yeah. And it does kick you your ass every single time. But that's when I decided that if my own inner circle doesn't give two shits of what I'm doing or not being supportive, then you know what? I need to do this for myself. Yeah. I don't care. And this is why I tell people, I honestly really don't care. You can like me. Wonderful. I'll be your best friend. I'll be your biggest cheerleader. I'll be your biggest inspiration. I will help you out. But if you don't like me, I still am not going to care. I'm still going to help you. If you fall down, I'm still going to put you up because I've been there. Yeah. I, I love this. Fair. Yeah. And it's just I love that, that fairness is just not there. Yeah. And I, I love this story because I think people often look at confident people and assume they were always that way. Mm -hmm. And I knew some parts of your story, but I didn't know all those details. And when you put them all together, it's like, you're like, no, I wasn't just not confident. Like I was bullied. Like it was so bad that I attempted suicide. Like I was so low, like you just, and then like, till you found your acceptance, till you found your group, till you found people who loved you unconditionally and slowly built back this person who, when anyone who meets you will say, oh yeah, Bina, she's so confident like that. You just exude confidence, but it's, it was not always that way. No. It's a muscle that you can flex. It's something that you can grow. It's something that you can get better at. So it's just such an amazing story of like redemption, you know? And this is why I tell everyone, you have to, I don't care if it's your family, your sister, your cut people out who are toxic. Yes. <laughs> I don't give two flying fucks if they're blood, not blood, religious. There's the priest, the Pope. I don't care who it is. If they are toxic to you, to you, and they're yes. not respectful to you, they do not need to be in your life. Yes, yes, yes. I mm, preach so about true. this so much and I coach around this a lot. Even on my personal one-on-ones, this is the one thing to go, well, you know, they've done this so much for me. But when you ask them, this is my biggest thing. I tell people, we go to concerts for people that we don't even know. We spend hundreds of dollars for a concert, right? We'll spend hundreds of dollars on a play because it's an experience. 
we'll spend hundreds of dollars at a winery or whatever the thing is, right? Because we want to help, we want to donate, whatever the situation is. Your closest people should want to invest in you. Your yeah. closest people should be paying you for at least a session or two sessions to get you off your ground because they want to believe in you. You That's know, my a really good point. You call with me, he paid me. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't to our same account, but you know. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but that exchange of energy, I, 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 I never thought of it that way, and it's like people are afraid to ask their relatives or their friends for money because it's like, but it's like, you're serving them. And serving also them. If they are, and if they're in your circle, they should be supporting you and helping right. you get your practice off the ground. So I, right. I love that. Because I love it's that. Why. And if they go, Oh, well, I don't need this. Then can you refer me to somebody that can Right. Can you right. at least, if you can't give that to me, can you at least just do a big, can you help me in other ways? Right. Because you go to work and you do it. Right. Right. Would you help someone else? Like, and I tell this people, like, you always want to act the way you truly want to be treated. I am the big thing about local markets, going to farmer markets, going whatever it is, because they're the ones that are hustling. They're the ones that are trying to get there. But if I don't help them, what makes you think any of them is going to help me? Right. Right. You yeah. go to the Chamber of Commerce. Everyone's like, oh, go to the Chamber of Commerce. You're going to. I don't give two flying shits for that because two reasons. I don't know any of them. Right. Right. How are they going to know who I am if I'm not present and going out there, giving them, calling them, saying hi, exchanging numbers, saying hi to my neighbors. Like it starts so small. And that's why a lot of people are like, oh, I got to do this on social media. I got to do this. None of my B2B business came on social media. Mm -hmm. I want people to remember, I became six figures, not on social media. Yeah. It's about relationships and connection. And that's what people want more than anything right now is connection. And you can, you can do that anywhere. That's the truth in person, online, anywhere. It's anywhere. Yeah. Go to yeah. your neighbor's house, talk to yeah. them, go door to door, like right, right. build your own community. It starts with you. And if you sit there and if anyone's like, well, I feel weird doing that, then you're in the wrong profession. Right. Like, I'm sorry. You're in the wrong. Or, or it's a muscle you can grow and something you can learn. It's very, can, it's a learnable skill. There's, skill. After a while, it's an excuse. Right. Like, I tell right. people this all the time. I go, you're telling me when we're at bedside, you can't walk into a room saying, hi, I'm being, I'm going to be your nurse today. They go, yeah, right. in a heartbeat. I go, okay. So why can't you walk around saying, hi, I'm, I'm nurse coach Bina. This is what I do. This is what I can offer. How's that right. any different? Right. Right. Totally. Totally. Yeah. But it's, it's a learn, it, it can, it's a skill that can be learned. Just, I do believe that. Yeah. It yeah. can't be, but it's also just right here. Like yeah. you've got to have that. I always say it all starts with you. How do you love mm -hmm. yourself? Yeah. How do you perceive yourself? But also knowing that, and again, we say this in the collective all the time, do not get attached to the outcomes. Right. Right. The minute yeah. you let go of getting unattached to the outcomes, Right. What's, what, okay. They say no, or they say, get out of my face. Okay. Right. It's about not caring. And it, it goes together being able right. to not care about the outcome and then being able to just put yourself out there confidently and connect with people and just show them what your medicine is and help them because yeah. what we have is medicine. Because yeah. and that's the thing, right? We are, we're the trailblazers in this thing. People now, I mean, when we first, when we graduated, right, there was what, seven, maybe 7,000 of us nurse coaches 700 or I think. maybe yeah. less yeah yeah not a lot yeah there wasn't a lot there's right a few thousand now yeah several thousand and now there's like a couple of like I think it's over 10,000 because now with the collective and the other um the programs. other you yeah. know, programs out there so it's like all it takes is for you to believe and I say this to anyone who's listening believe in yourself find your own confidence and your voice but find it with your passion because right. how you are is how you are. Don't change you just because social media is saying to change it. Right. Don't. Right. Yeah. And that's even it. like with you. And you're saying like, oh, I have my voice and with, you know, with your, with your, um, you know, religious community and stuff. This has nothing to do with that. You are being a higher being. If anything, they should respect you more. 
Cause oh, and they do. Phones. It's all up here. It's all in my head. Yeah. It's not like anyone's criticizing me or saying anything. It's totally, that's the other lesson that I've learned through all of that is that a lot of this negative self-talk that we perceive oh God, people are horrible. saying about us is here. It's us saying it to ourselves and then projecting it on our community, on our family and saying, oh, they don't support me. And sometimes it's true. Sometimes you really are not being supported or people are actually being criticized, but very often it's us just internalizing that and criticizing ourselves And so to me, that was like a huge revelation because once I realized that it's like, oh, if the voices are coming from me, then I can work with them. Right. Like I can, I can talk, I can talk myself down, you know, that's the thing is when we talk, when we do that negative self-talk to ourselves, that is our number one poison. Yeah. That is our own poison. Yeah. That is our own poison. I do this still to this day where I sit there and I'll have a lot of stuff that will I thought, you know, I think I resolved. I'll come in, especially from my childhood, coming back. Then there's days where I'm like, a lot of people are like, oh, you don't feel like that no more. No, I do still feel like that some days. But the difference is, is that I have learned to take that power, that negativity, put it into my pit of my gut and say, you know what? I'm using that as fuel. Yes, yes. I'm not going to use this as an excuse. I'm using this as a, as a fuel to remind me not to go back there. I don't want to be broken again. And I say this lovingly, like I was like, I was very, very severely postpartum after Ron, like severe. And I don't want to go back, but does that still haunt me? hundred percent. Does that still mess with my head sometimes? Absolutely. There are days where I want to remind people, no. There are days I wake up and I have to check myself with like, okay, am I good today? And my husband's like, you're good. You're good. And then just knowing that, and he sees signs that comes in and he'll be like, you know what? We got to get out of the, we got to get out. We got to do a change in scenario. We got to do X, Y, and Z. Let's go for a walk. Yeah. Yeah. that's That's the support that you need. Yeah. It doesn't go away. Those, I mean, no. I don't know. Maybe there are people for whom it goes away, but it generally doesn't go away. And a lot of it is it learning how to cope me. with yeah. it. Yeah. And learning how to recognize when it's happening. And this is something very recently that I've noticed with myself is I still, like, I notice more distance from those thoughts. So like when those negative thoughts pop up, it's like, oh, there it is again. So like, I'm still getting the negative thoughts, but I'm able to just be a little more, unattached and not let them suck me in and just be like, Oh, okay. Like it's like an old annoying friend that just keeps coming into my (laughs) life. And like, can I just be like, all right, like, why don't you go sit over there, you know, just kind of nicely and just, you know, yeah. Anyway, I feel like we could go on all day. I want to be respectful of your time. So we're going to wrap up in a couple of minutes. Any last words, any last pearls of wisdom? There's so many gold nuggets in here. I love this interview. I love chatting with you, Bina. I'm so glad we got to catch up. Um, Yeah. Any last words and where can people find you? Last words, just be you. Like, don't worry about social media. Don't worry about who other people are doing or what they're doing. How do they create it? You just go do it. Like, and I have to quote that from Nike and I got to state that legally because otherwise apparently I can get in trouble from Facebook. (laughs) Apparently I'm getting in trouble with Facebook a lot. I know they don't like you. That's oh, it. Everyone knows you can find me on social media. Apparently, I'm pretty much out there. Find me on social media. You can email me, message me, go through Rachel. People have been finding me. Yeah, yeah. She's not hard to find. She's not hard to find. Well, thank you so much for this, Bina. I really appreciate you popping on. I know your life is very, very busy, but I really appreciate you popping on, catching up, sharing some wisdom. There's so many gold nuggets in here. Um, yes. And I'm just going to put one last message out there. I am launching my workshop in a week and a half. If anybody has been eyeing it, I literally have like one spot left. So if you're really desperate to join, just let me know. It's going to be amazing. I have such an awesome group of nurses joining. Like every time I run this workshop, I'm just amazed at the nurses that come into my, that come into my world. So and you've had people multi- do repeat. Yes. Have you had repeats people that yes. have been doing it repeat? Yes. Like they've done one nurses done who are like publishing now and putting out articles and publishing their poetry. And we have all sorts of in- incredible, exciting things going on. It's a super fun space um, for anyone who is looking to write and be more creative. So just hit me up. That is also finding your voice. Yes. Yes. hundred percent. All right. Thank you everyone for watching. I will catch you next time and peace. Have a wonderful weekend. TGIF. Thank you guys. Bye.